Now we know. Putin has never believed that NATO is a threat. Why? Let's find out. Imagine this scenario. Your biggest enemy just gained more territory just at your borders. They're rearming. They're sending troops. They're sending troops to help a country you're at war with. They're doing everything they can to help them. What is your response? Well, what would you think? What would you do? Wouldn't you send all your available forces to the borders to protect them? Wouldn't you prepare for an attack by your big enemy? Wouldn't you maybe think about where your priorities lie? If that is such a big enemy, why wouldn't you put in your troops at the border to defend? Now, what is happening right now in Russia? Apparently, Finland joining NATO has the strange result that Russian troops are pulling away from the border to Finland, the new NATO neighbor. Apparently, Russian troops are withdrawing also from the territories they are occupying in Georgia. Abkhazia, North Ossetia. Apparently they're disappearing in Sakhalin. They're disappearing all over the world, apparently also from Tajikistan. Now what does this tell you? This tells you, again, that Putin does not really believe that NATO is an enemy. Every time he says this, it has been a lie. It has been a lie from the very beginning. NATO never was an enemy of Russia. NATO expansion happened in agreement with Russia. When NATO expansion happened, NATO was very clear not to move any nuclear weapons towards the border of Russia and to move not too many troops and not station them permanently at the Russian border. When you think of NATO expansion, you think of all these countries joining NATO, and it looks amazing. But that's not really what it is. That's not what it used to be. Now it may change because of Russian aggression against Ukraine. What NATO expansion meant was that countries that used to be under the colonial occupation of the Soviet Union system decided that they were safer with NATO, and at the first chance they got, they sought NATO protection. At no point was any treaty signed with Russia or any agreement made with Russia to not expand NATO. NATO can't do that because every country that joined, joined voluntarily. There were a few conversations with Gorbachev, with the Soviet Union, about not expanding, maybe, some politicians made these promises, they were never codified. So if in diplomacy or in politics promises are made, but they're not followed through in treaties or in law, you can forget, forget about it. Putin even wondered that the Russia should join NATO. Of course, in order for that to happen, Russia would have had to reform its structures and they would have had to regularly apply. You don't just decide you want to be in NATO. You have to have a long process of transformation. You have to have be a stable democracy. Well, okay. At least when joining. Yeah. Let's see what Turkey is doing. But you have to fulfill certain criteria. Eventually, Russia wasn't willing to do that, and that's how that thing died. 
Putin was supportive of NATO, of the West, on 9-11. Even after NATO had just fought against Serbia and Serbian genocide towards Kosovo, Bosnia, and its aggression against areas wanting to be liberated from Yugoslavia. Even that didn't stop Russia being friendly with NATO. This whole story that NATO is a threat to Russia has to be translated as follows. NATO has threatened Russian ambitions to attack countries that now are in NATO. That's why Ukraine should have joined in 2008. It was a big mistake not to allow that, or not to allow to Georgia. On the other hand, Ukraine was a different country back then, so you have to kind of remember that. This was not yet Zelensky's Ukraine. Zelensky ran for president on the platform that he explained on his television show, Serpent of the People. He ran on an anti-corruption platform. He has worked to transform the country even now during wartime. So this is a completely different situation now. Ukraine now probably could qualify for NATO membership. Back then, it maybe didn't. But still, even then, NATO did not accept Georgia and Ukraine. So if you follow Putin's narrative, there was no danger of Ukraine in NATO. All of this, what he says, what Russian propaganda says about NATO being a threat to Russia, is only true insofar as NATO is a threat to Russian expansionist, imperialist, aggressive policies. That's what that means. And Putin just demonstrated that he himself doesn't believe it. Otherwise, he would not thin his troops on the border to new NATO members. Okay, thank you for this, uh, for listening. Thank you. This is Erratic Attempts. I'm Dr. Philip Kneiss, and see you soon.